We're here at Parks Range, home of the Champions Army Marksmanship Unit, and I have an uh, opportunity to talk to Sergeant First Class Sokolowski. Now, point of interest here is Sergeant Sokolowski being an outstanding 2700 bullseye shooter due to an injury had to change hands. What were some of the issues that caused that? Some of the issues uh, I started to notice um, was initially was just a, had an increased arc of movement. Um, you know, as a competitive shooter, you know, my arc of movement, the better it is, the easier it is to shoot. Um, so as I, um, my first indication was is that I needed to uh, uh, do a little more strengthening exercises. Um, so I started to do strengthening exercises thinking that that was probably was the issue. Um, and, but over time, uh, it started to get worse, and I had issues with not only arc of movement increase, I started to get a little bit of pain associated with gripping the gun. Um, so eventually it got to the point to where it was painful enough that um, I could no longer compete competitively just due to the arc of movement and the pain. Um, so I knew that as soon as our competitive season ended at the national matches, um, you know, I got a, checked out by the doctor. And basically um, I had an uh, extreme case of uh, tendinitis. Uh, which was extremely inflamed in my uh, in my wrist area, and I contributed that to, you know, some of it was my, my own accord. Um, you know, I did a lot of home maintenance at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was shooting very heavily, and I was also doing lots of physical exercise. Um, at any rate, plus the you know, 20 years of shooting that I've done. Um, so during that time, um, I decided to you know take a break from shooting at the request of the doctors. Um, and I wanted to give it, you know, my arm a rest. Uh, but what I, I started to do is, in the meantime, is is uh, actually training a little bit left-handed. Um, my intent was to, is to is to keep my, my brain active and, and could still continue to shoot um, by doing a little bit of, of, of left-handed stuff. Um, what I found was is that um, I had a knack for it right off the get-go that I shot pretty well. Um, so, however, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to shoot the scores that I was used to shooting because it was awkward, but um, through a lot of dry fire um, and using uh, electronic training aids that we had at the time, which was Noptel, um, I was able to do a lot of training in the off season because the national matches in July, so I started my training uh, left-handed um, following the nationals all the way through the winter time. And due to the weather and things like that, uh, there's a lot of times where it's too cold. So I was able to get a lot of dry fire training in and a lot of knob tail. Um, and I would do it at the same same pace as we would normally shoot. I would do it in series of 10 shots. And then I would analyze uh, my trigger control and how things went. Um, so through a si series of systematic changes, um, I was able to um, transition to my left hand and also use that opportunity to fix little things that I knew were wrong, that I was a bad habit right-handed. Um, so as I started to train, um, I started to notice um, I definitely had some weak areas. You know, my shoulder was a lot weaker, my arms, uh, my recovery was slower. So I, I had to increase the speed at which I squeezed the trigger because, uh, because my recovery was slower, I still had to shoot the shots within the time limits. Mm -hmm. So I had to increase my trigger control speeds, um, but I also needed to still remain accurate. So that was a very one of the things I trained in dry fire is being able to squeeze the trigger faster um, and still not disturb the sights. Uh, the electronic training aid is great for that because it will tell you a lot of those things on what you're doing right or wrong. So not only as the shot is breaking, but like what it's doing prior what it's to doing, and do yes. Okay. Um, so using that tool, it helped out a lot. And my my focus was just primarily for several months is not really training on the range with live fire it was doing a lot of dry fire and doing this because I wanted to build up strength build up confidence um, and then once I started to live fire um, it started you know I started to realize that there was something that I, I didn't didn't anticipate and one of those was uh, I'm a right-handed shooter and I'm right eye dominant but now that I was shooting left-handed I was using my right eye but be, but by shooting like a service pistol with iron sights mm -hmm. it was awkward um, so kind of went against the grain a little bit, but um, instead of using my right eye, I just put a, a patch over my right eye and used my left eye. Um, it was a little awkward at first, but afterwards it was more efficient. Um, I was able to look straight down my arm, uh, straight through my left eye. Um, I felt my recovery was better and I can see better um, by doing so. Um, so by doing that, that helped a lot in my, 
my recovery and everything because it was a little more challenging uh, with my right eye. Um, but I will say that within a few months of time, um, it, I really couldn't tell the difference. And one of my shooters on the team asked me that question. He's like, does it feel like you're shooting right-handed now? You know, does it feel the same? Or correct-handed, I suppose, now. Yeah, yeah correct-handed, or just, just you notice any difference. And um, I would say by the springtime, we shot our first regional, which was in Jacksonville, Florida, at the Dixie, uh, the Dixie match. And, uh, and he asked me that question. And uh, by then, by April time frame, I had got so accustomed to shooting left-handed, left-eyed, um, that it felt exactly the same as I was shooting right-handed. There was definitely still differences. You know, you can't just transition from one hand to the next um, and not notice some differences. Um, I still didn't have the recovery, uh, wasn't there. Um, however, I felt that that really wasn't a limiting factor in the way that I shot because um, I always thought to myself I needed to speed my trigger control up anyway, so it kind of was a... Um, it was almost a habit where I was taking a little more time than I needed to mm -hmm. because my recoil management was so strong. Um, so over the time, um, I developed almost the same ability. Um, my first competition that I shot um, ended up breaking 2600. Um, it was a 2624 or something like that. Okay. Um, and it the stamina was wasn't quite there. I you know I started to go downhill fast as far as my uh, strength and stamina to shoot the match. Um, however, I found that it was challenging again because um, my scores were lower than I was used to, but that made me more determined than ever because I still wanted to shoot well. Mm -hmm. So um, I really isolated my training time uh, and tried to get get myself to follow my shot plan and do things as correctly as possible, just like I would as an instructor and as a coach. You know, all the things I'm telling my shooters, you know, I had to really enforce that on myself right. um, and I found I had to put more time and effort in um, you know one of the you know talking to some of my shooters um, about it is you know they would see me training in some cases more than they did mm -hmm. um, I had to be careful not to overdo it uh, because you, you, know, you can over over train um, but I, I tried to have really max performance shooting as much as I could taking breaks and um, by the summertime I was actually shooting the same scores that I shot right-handed um, so I shot really well. All right, so your first match back, you shot a 2604 then, and what, what were the scores after that? Um, I started to rapidly progress. Um, you know, it was it was kind of an interesting thing for me, as and it was very fun and, and, and new, uh, just like it was when when I first started shooting. Is that it? You know, I started off as a marksman, and you know, my next goal was sharpshooter, and my next goal was expert. Sure. Um, so um, shooting the first you know first break in 2600. Um, my next target was to, to shoot a high master score, uh, in which I did. You know, I shot uh, 2624, um, and then the next match was only like one or two points above that. Um, but then I made a bigger jump, you know, jumping into 2640s. Um, and then uh, by the summer, you know, I was breaking 2650, um, which is right where I was um, when I shot, you know, right handed. Um, so it, it really was um, a great accomplishment for me. I, I really didn't. Um, didn't feel like I limited myself uh, in any way. I felt like um, I gave myself the best ability or best chance to shoot the scores, and uh, I spent a lot of time and effort. Um, I think that with just like anything, you know, I equate shooting a lot to physical exercise and training and PT. You know, if you know, um, I put in a lot of hard work, and, and the scores were there, um, and I was happy to shoot. You know, I broke you know 890s with my 22 and 45 uh, left-handed. And um, I believe, um, if my memory serves me right, I believe I placed fourth that year in the nationals uh, in the overall. So, you know, I was, I really wanted to, 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 to win something at the nationals uh, that year because I was really doing really well. Um, but, uh, you know, overall, looking back at it, I accomplished a lot of great things that year and shot good scores. Um, so I'm happy, you know, that I was able to do that. So you were able to successfully transition for as a right-handed shooter completely over to being now a left-handed shooter within one year, one season. Now you mentioned about doing a lot of dry practice. How, what would a typical dry practice session be for you for when you did this? Okay. Well, uh, you know, we have uh, our Service Pistol Hall of Fame, and we have a lot of top shooters uh, that have been from our marksmanship unit. And now uh, some of those shooters are local, and uh, we've had opportunities to talk with those guys for several years. And as well as, as over the years, I've talked to a lot of top shooters. And one of the things that 
you know, you ask those guys, you know, you know, you're a 10 time national champion, five time national champion, you know, what can I do to get better? And the one thing that you'll hear very commonly is, is dry fire. Mm -hmm. You know, ammunition is hard to come by unless you're sponsored by a team, a military team or civilian teams. Um, but you can dry fire. So I took that to heart and said, well, let me, let me dry fire and see what, what comes of it. And basically what I would do was, is, uh, just like I would, like I mentioned earlier is that, um, I'll expand upon it is that I would go out and set up on the firing line. I'd put my set my gun box up when all my equipment, I'd put my glasses on, my earmuffs on, um, and I would dry fire and give myself a time limit. So I would set up the timer for say 10 minutes and I would do a 10 minute dry fire uh, session. Um, and I'd try to do it as close to what I was going to be doing it for real in competition. Um, and then I would, you know, um, and I would do sessions like that multiple times. Um, and I did that also at work and I also did that um, in the afternoons at home in the evenings um, trying to get you know very comfortable doing so because especially switching over to left-handed there was a bit of awkwardness to it which I'm sure you can imagine mm -hmm. is doing things you know with your opposite hand um, so I tried to do everything else to accompany that so not only did I you know I'm a right-handed you know everything I do is right-handed so I started you know brushing my teeth left-handed every time I carry something I'd carry it left-handed um, just to try to use that hand to get more comfortable with it. Um, I also had the opportunity to use Noptail and with the Noptail sessions uh, I was again I did it the same fashion set up everything is just like I was going to shoot a competition and I would shoot 10 shot series and with Noptail it gives us a lot of feedback on what my arc of movement is uh, how, what happens before the shot breaks and what happens after the shot breaks. Um, I really wasn't focused so much on anything except breaking my shot within my hold um, and that's what I was concerned with it does cheek track your scores but things do you know get the, you know you can bump the laser and things like that mm -hmm. so I really wasn't concerned with that is is being able to quickly squeeze the trigger because again I didn't have the stamina that I, I had um, and break the shot within my hold and I would do that you know probably uh, 10 shot sessions, you know, take a quick five minute break, come back to it, and did that multiple times a day um, where I could. And that helped drastically. Um, that also helped because it was it was also like a holding exercise. Um, I Where I could, I incorporate holding exercises as well, using like a three pound weight um, where I had the time. You know, if I'm watching TV, I would hold out like a three pound weight. Um, I'd also do it with, with my right hand as well, just to keep, you know, keep myself going. But um, I tried to hold out and do training a little bit as, um, because I did notice that it didn't, you know, I couldn't hold the gun out as long as I could. Mm -hmm. um, my recovery was slower, but also I couldn't hold the gun um, as long. Um, one of the things I also did in dry fire was uh, I used a double action pistol. I had a uh, Beretta, for instance, okay. and I would practice dry firing um, double action and also have a revolver. And I would practice dry firing the revolver and trying to keep the sights aligned. Because one of the things I did notice as well is that my trigger control, um, you know, I would start training and after a while I would get my trigger finger, it would get tired, okay. uh, believe it or not. Um, and um, so by doing a bunch of double action, like not, uh, with a revolver and then with my Beretta, um, I was able to build up that strength and get comfortable squeezing the trigger uh, with that heavy trigger um, and also not you know moving in my fingers and things like that so that helped out a lot as well um, but that's pretty much what I, I tried to do in my dry fire training so it sounds like a lot of it was just you're doing it often enough not some huge long sessions but doing it multiple smaller sessions many times over and over again until you basically developed more and more stamina as you went yes and and I also do that same thing now in, in just training in general is that I try not to, to have a huge long session as uh, I'll do maybe 10 shots or maybe 20 shots, get in position, set up everything and try to do it as, as close to my shot plan as possible, adhering to that as much as I can. Um, and then as soon as I'm done, I can you know break uh, my position uh, because I found is uh, also because I was doing something new is that it was awkward you know, just my, my position in general was awkward, you know, get checking my natural point of aim and things like that. Didn't come as natural as they did when I was shooting uh, right-handed. Um, so I, every 10 shots, I would step out of position, step back in position, 
and you know re, you know reestablish my natural point of aim and things like that. Um, and it's interesting. I learned something. Uh, one thing that now talking about it, I remember is that one of the things I did learn um, that uh, which helped me actually was the guns that were issued to me um, that they typically are issued with full length triggers in the pistols. Um, and over the years, I developed you know right handed. I just I learned to shoot the guns that I had. Um, but then when I switched over to left handed. Again, like I mentioned, is I tried to 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 do things as correctly and to fix any errors in my shooting system. So I tried to make sure that when I was gripping left-handed, that I had the proper grip, proper trigger finger placement. Well, I identified right away that my triggers were too long. Okay. So um, I had all my triggers cut on all my guns and shortened um, so that I can pull the trigger straight to the rear. And now I had shot that way with long triggers for years, just full-length triggers. Um, before I realized it is when I switched to left-handed uh, okay. because I just had attention to detail I was able to notice that you know, I'm pushing my shots, you know, and it had to do with the trigger being too just too long um, So I shortened all my triggers up and all my guns um, Because of that so I suppose in a way you would kind of masked this Slight error just by rote repetition and kind of forcing yourself to learn it anew kind of indicated like oh this needs to be adjusted here yes and uh because i one of the things that we we do teach um and it's in our our uh you know our manuals and everything is is aligning the gun you know to to you and, and also trying to use as much bone support and uh uh and putting as much of of our bodies behind the gun um so one of the things that i noticed that i developed over years is is that my fingers aren't real long so i, I actually was gripping the gun more on the right hand side of the gun so I don't know if that had anything to do with contributing to um, any of my injury at all, but you know when you do that, when you start turning your wrist, it has a different type of recoil um, than when your wrist is more straight and natural. So my hand was more to the side of the gun. So when I started shooting left-handed, I did notice that as well, is that you know it, it wasn't natural. So when I would put the gun in my hand and check my natural point of aim, my natural point of aim was would be you know somewhat okay, but then what I would call the gun alignment the gun in my hand would be way off. You know, if I close my eyes, pick up the gun, check my natural point of aim, my body would be oriented towards my target, but the pistol would be would be way off. Okay. Um, so by cutting that trigger back, I was able to get that pistol straight in my hand, which helped get the recoil coming right back down my arm, uh, which meant I was able to get my, my recovery was was able to give me a little bit faster as well. Excellent. Well, it's very good tips, I think, for anyone that, whether they're recovering from an injury or just goes to show even for an extremely high level shooter that mm -hmm. basic fundamentals always apply and oh, yeah. just being attuned to them and staying attuned to them is always important. Yes, um, you know, I, I learned a lot from it and uh, I think now as a uh, pistol coach for the, the Army team is uh, I try to use those things um, and give those things back to my shooters uh, because we do have left-handed shooters. Uh, we have one left-handed shooter right now on the team. Um, and it's little things that I picked up that I learned, and I've also picked them up from you know talking to other shooters on our team. Uh, one of our uh, former shooters, uh, Jason Sargent, mm -hmm. uh, he was one of our left-handed shooters uh, for years, and I picked up since he was on the team at the time. You know, I asked him questions because he was a left-handed shooter, and there was some small things that um, that are different for a left-handed shooter, um, like the way he you know would set up his gun box and things like that. Um, he had his gun box set up like a right-handed shooter. He was on the on the left-hand side, okay. and um, so my initial thought was is that as now that I'm shooting left-handed, I have to reach back into my box and look over to my scope. It was very awkward, um, but talking with him, it made perfect sense. He's like, um, if I put it on the right side, all the shooter's brass next to me is going to hit me, um, and he have no way to put a brass screen on uh, and block it, so there would be nothing in between it. So I used those tips from him, and now that we have left-handed shooters on the team, I've seen they had their box on the right, and you're getting pelted by brass, not only from the shooter next to him, but the brass bouncing off out of, from his gun, off his gun box, back to the shooter. Um, so try to apply the things that I've learned uh, back to our guys. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. I think that will be extremely useful. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.